How much time to spend in meditation? How much time to devote to the timeless? Is our focus today on the Sant Mat Satsang podcast, a production of Spiritual Awakening Radio? I begin with a bit of poetry from the Book of Murdad. The wheel of time rotates, but its access is ever at rest. God is the access of the wheel of time. Though all things rotate about him in time and space, yet he is always timeless and spaceless and still. Though all things proceed from his word, yet is his word as timeless and spaceless as he. In the access, all is peace. On the rim, all is commotion. Where would you rather be? I say to you, slip from the rim of time into the access and spare yourselves the nausea of motion. Let time revolve about you, but you revolve not with time. The Book of Murdad. A bit about the flow state. How much time does it take to reach a flow state? And by the way, what is a flow state? The state of flow, or being, quote, in the zone, unquote, is a state of peak performance, or a sense of fluidity between your body and mind, where you are completely absorbed by and deeply focused upon something beyond the point of distraction. Time feels like it has slowed down. The science shows us that it takes around 20 to 30 minutes for most to enter a flow state. A couple of schools of spirituality and the amount of time they recommend. What others do. Those involved in mindfulness-based stress reduction might recommend practicing meditation for around 45 minutes per day. To achieve results, Transcendental Meditation, or TM, recommends 20 minutes twice daily, 20 minutes in the morning, and 20 minutes in the evening. Enter the path of the Masters and its goals for spiritual or meditation practice as a gateway to the beyond. Longer meditation sits to go deeper. The goal of the saints, mystics, and masters goes far beyond stress or anxiety reduction. Being centered and calm are the foundation or launching pad for inner exploration of the realms of the spirit, inner space, the kingdom of the heavens within. And the third eye center is the portal to the heavens, a kind of doorway to the temple of the spirit. For some, this might mean gaining a subtle awareness of inner seeing, faint flickering light perhaps, or a faint tone in the silence. And for others, it might be the beginning of a consciously induced near-death experience or soul travel into worlds of light, love, and divine music, the music of the spheres. For this more lofty goal, longer periods of time devoted to meditation practice are understandably required. In the book Enchanted Land, David Christopher Lane writes, Unlike other yogic disciplines in India, such as Kundalini, Surat Shabad Yoga does not advocate breath control or pranayama or a series of physical postures as part of its practice. Rather, it is concerned with withdrawing consciousness from the nine apertures of the body eyes, ears, nose, mouth, genitals, and alimentary canal, and transcending the corporeal frame and its limitations altogether. This is accomplished by attaching the mind's attention to an inner light and sound, which is believed to be radiating behind the proverbial tenth door, the third eye. 
anatomically located behind and slightly above the physical eyes in the forehead. When consciousness becomes totally concentrated at this pivotal point between the worlds, the soul, according to the saints in this tradition, leaves the body and experiences, in elevating degrees, higher regions of bliss. The distinctive characteristic of Surat Shabad Yoga is its emphasis upon listening to the inner sound current, known variously as Shabd or Shabad, Nod, or audible life stream. It is through this union of the soul with the primordial music of the universe that the practice derives its name, surat or soul, shabd, sound current, and yoga, meaning union. To be able to achieve a consciously induced near-death state takes great effort. Hence, masters of this path emphasize a threefold method designed to still the mind and vacate the body. Practices known as Simran, Dhyan, and Bhajan. Simran, the repetition of a holy name or names, draws one's attention to the eye center, keeping thoughts from being scattered too far outside. Such sacred remembrance is similar in form to the use of a mantra or special prayer, except that the name or names are repeated silently with the mind and not with the tongue. This stage, according to practitioners, is the first and perhaps most difficult leg of meditation. Dhyan or Dhyan, contemplation within, is a technical procedure to hold one's attention at the third eye focus. In the beginning, this may be simply gazing into the darkness or re-imaging the Guru's face, but it eventually develops into seeing light of various shapes. Out of this light appears the radiant form of one's spiritual master, who guides the neophyte on the inner voyage and becomes the central point of Dion. Bhajan, listening to the celestial melody or sound, is the last and most important part of Surat Shabad Yoga, because it is the vehicle by which the meditator can travel to exalted planes of awareness. Whereas Simran draws and Dion holds the mind's attention, it is Bhajan which takes awareness on its upward ascent back to the supreme abode, Sach Khand. Naturally, mastery of Surat Shabad Yoga is not an overnight affair, but involves years of consistent application and struggle. The desired results, adepts in this tradition agree, being largely due to the earnestness and day-to-day -day practice of the seeker. In due time, if the process is complete, the individual spirit current or substance is slowly withdrawn from the body. First from the lower extremities, which become feelingless or numb, and then from the rest of the body. The process is identical with that which takes place at the time of death, only this is voluntary, while that of death is involuntary. Eventually, he is able to pierce the veil that intervenes, which in reality is not thicker than the wing of a butterfly. And then he opens what is called the tenth door and steps out into a new world. The body remains in the position in which he left it, quite senseless, but unharmed by the process. He is now in a world he never saw before, that last paragraph is a quote from Julian P. Johnson, quoted by David Lane in Enchanted Land. Julian P. Johnson describing the process of soul travel. In his wonderful book, The Harmony of All Religions, Swami Sant Seviji writes about the goals of Sant Mat meditation, also known as Surat Shabad Yoga. Thank you. 
Swami Sat Seviji. Sat Mat, the path and teachings as taught and practiced by saints or Sat Sat Gurus, delineates the path of union of soul with God. The teachings of the saints explain the reuniting as follows. The individual soul has descended from the higher worlds, the realm of the divine, to this city of illusion, bodily existence. It has descended from the soundless state to the essence of sound, from that sound to light, and finally from the realm of light to the realm of darkness. The qualities, dharmas, natural tendencies of the sense organs draw us downward and away from our true nature. The nature of the soul, or Atman, draws us upward and inwards and establishes us in our own true nature. Returning to our origins involves turning inward. Withdrawal of consciousness from the senses and the sense objects in order to go upward from the darkness to the realms of light and sound. Another way to express this is to go inward from the external sense organs to the depth of the inner self. The natural tendencies of the soul or Atman are to move from outward to inward. The current of consciousness which is dispersed in the nine gates of the body and the senses, must be collected at the tenth gate. The tenth gate is the gathering point of consciousness. Therein lies the path of our return. The tenth gate is also known as the sixth chakra, the third eye center, located between the two eyebrows. This is the gateway through which we leave the gates of the sense organs and enter the divine realms and finally become established in the soul. We travel back from the realm of darkness to the realm of light, from the light to the divine sound, and from the realm of sound to the soundless state. This is called turning back to the source. This is what Dharma, or religion, really intends to teach us. This is the essence of Dharma. With the practice of the Yoga of Light, Inner Light Meditation, the adherent, leaving the realm of darkness, enters the realm of light and begins to hear numerous divine sounds. The Yoga of Sound, Surat Shabad Yoga, Inner Sound Meditation, is the highest and final practice of Sant Mat. Through the practice of this form of meditation, the seeker realizes the Supreme Lord and becomes united with the Divine. A reading from the writings of Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. Back to David Lane's book, Enchanted Land. Before the inner voyage, the voyage interior of light and sound can begin, the meditator must become adept at withdrawing his or her attention from the world and concentrating one-pointedly at the third eye center. Accordingly, when the neophyte has achieved even a modicum of success, having sensations of numbness just up to the solar plexus, up to the solar plexus, flashes of light will begin to manifest. At first it appears that the light is coming and going, causing the phenomenon of bright sparks, but in actuality it is the mind which is ascending and descending. The feeling of physical insensibility is one of the important acid tests to determine if the meditation process is proceeding correctly. Starting in the feet, numbness rises slowly through the lower extremities until the entire body feels like stone. When such a voluntary 
paralysis occurs, the meditator gravitates more to the inner universe than to the outer one. According to the masters, it is the function of Simran to instigate this type of benumbing impression, which releases the mind from its constructing hold on the material corpus. It is at this junction when the meditator senses an intense feeling of upward movement, as if being literally pulled by a magnetic force, as if literally pulled by a magnetic force. This sucking effect is the direct result of one's attention moving inward or away from the outward orifices. Though it be but a preliminary stage, the student experiences firsthand what it is like to have an out-of-body sensation. With practice, the meditator finally does achieve total out-of-body consciousness, traveling at immense speeds through regions of darkness, not dissimilar in content to reports of clinically dead patients who have been resuscitated. See those books by Raymond Moody and Kenneth Ring on near-death experiences for parallels to Surat Shabad Yoga. After complete withdrawal from the physical body, the neophyte's capacity for inner sight, or nirat, and sound, or surat, increases tremendously, enabling him or her to see and hear clearly what was only thought before to be a figment of religious imagination. Accompanying this ability is also the realization of a super-conscious state of awareness remarkably more vivid and lucid than the ordinary waking state. That is a reading from the book Enchanted Land by David Christopher Lane. Likening Surat Shabad Yoga or inner light and sound meditation to a consciously induced near-death experience or out-of-body travel, sometimes referred to as soul travel. In Sant Mat, the rule is to make the elevated state of consciousness known as contemplative meditation, part of daily life, and to never skip a day, but to always meditate every single day. This is the part of today's Satsang podcast where we delve into the question, how much time to spend in meditation? How much time to devote to this timeless practice of exploring the new world, the kingdom of the heavens, inner space, that realm, indeed many realms or higher planes, accessed from within. Sant Tulsi Sahib of Hathras said, if you do the practice for a few days, the inner way will open before you. It is the path to reach the one God, the Most High. This is from the last words of Baba Devi Sahib. When Satguru Baba Devi Sahib was nearing the time of his departure from this ephemeral world for his true destination, Satsangis, or initiates, disciples, humbly requested him to bless them with his parting words. To their request, Baba Devi Sahib had obliged by saying, This world is an illusion. Practice meditation. Do not live even a single day without inner meditation. And this is from the last words of Swami Sant Seviji Maharaj. 
Whatever little is possible, do meditation every day. But never ever give up or discontinue meditation. You will definitely meet with success. So here the emphasis is upon always meditating, always doing some meditation, no matter what, every single day. The following is from the book Spiritual Elixir by Kripal Singh. The meditation practices should be an easy, natural, and enjoyable process, wherein you could sit for extended hours. Be regular and lovingly devoted to your holy meditations, as that is the central pivot around which the whole sacred teaching revolves, and therein an all around development of the soul is granted. That really encapsulates Sant Mat completely right there. Be regular and lovingly devoted to your holy meditations, as that is the central pivot around which the whole sacred teaching revolves, and therein an all-around development of the soul is granted. Kripal Singh's Spiritual Elixir Getting ready to meditate. This is Kripal Singh from Letters to Vermont Initiates. Before sitting for meditation, pray to the master power overhead. This will give you impetus and help. You will please adopt the posture best suited to you in which you can sit for the longest time and put in equal time to both the practices. Unquote. Here he is referring to both inner light meditation and the practice of inner hearing or inner sound meditation. And from that same document, Letters to Vermont Initiates, Sant Kripal Singh Ji says, As to the time for meditation, you may give any time which is convenient to you, preferably before dawn. If, however, you are not able to give time in the small hours of the morning, you may give time which suits you best. Unquote. Kripal Singh, recommending early in the morning, Amrit Vela, the hour of elixir, but You know, any time of day is a good time for meditation. The important thing is to do meditation. He explains the ideal of Sant Mat is to tithe 10% of the day to meditation practice, which equals two and a half hours of total meditation time daily. In Kirpal Singh's book, The Night is a Jungle, he articulates this point. All masters tell the devotees to do their Simran and Bhajan. Huzur, referring to Huzur Baba Sawan Singh, Huzur used to say, you people give one-tenth of your earnings, so you should also give one-tenth of your time. One-tenth of a day, a tithe of time, is two and a half hours. Some sit for merely five minutes, some for half an hour, and many not at all. Others sit when the occasion fits their mood. If the connection which is given at initiation is not increased, what happens? The attention remains outward and does not withdraw and invert. A person may sit hours on end, and others may think he is a devoted meditator, but inside he sees nothing. Awake! This is the time to understand what is what. The masters come, lift up their hands, and shout to the world, Do your meditation, for without it you cannot be free. The masters all explain the truth in very simple terms. The masters in truth say, make your meditation. Listen, open your ears and listen. He who has made his meditation has made everything. He whose meditation is not made will enjoy no meaning in his life's achievements. There is great purpose behind this emphasis on the importance of meditation. 
If your daily life is not under control, try to bring it in control. Or give more time to meditation and you will be able to gain control quicker. Get the full benefit of meditation and increase it day by day. The more you increase it, the nearer you will advance toward your goal. If you refuse, the day will come when you will be filled with regret for the lost opportunity. Kirpal Singh on the ideal of two and a half hours total meditation time per day, tithing a 24-hour day, devoting 10% to spiritual practice. Kirpal Singh, The Night is a Jungle. Kirpal Singh often emphasized living in the present moment, the nowness of time, which is a kind of way of saying eternity in the present, experiencing that timeless eternity in the now. He says, always live in the living present moment. Always live in the living present, in the living moment. If you care for the living moment, you can care for eternity. Every moment of life is very valuable. Make the best use of it. If you watch your present moment, then everything is all right. Keep constant, vigilant watch over your thoughts every moment. If you watch the, the present moment, if you watch the present moment, that will go on till eternity. Nothing can go wrong. Standing at the crossroads of time, we must make a firm resolve to do better from day to day. As there are landmarks on earth, so there are landmarks in time. The past and future are like sealed books to us. The one is in the limbo of oblivion, while the other is in the womb of uncertainty. It is only the living present that is ours, and we must make the best use of it ere it slips away through the fingers and is lost forever. Human birth is a great privilege and offers us a golden opportunity. It is for us to make or mar the same, for it is given to each individual to forge his or her own destiny as best he may. Kirpal Singh on The Living Present Selections from the Satsang Discourses of Baba Ram Singh. As to why we do not do our meditation and we do not listen to Satsang regularly, it is because we do not have faith, adequate faith, in it. We do not have that much love and affection for our Master and for our Bhajan Simran. We are manifested completely outside. So we are identifying ourselves with everything outside. We have complete faith in what we see outside, and we have our full love and affection for everything that we are doing outside. And that is why we are not able to sit and do that meditation regularly and listen to satsang regularly. When we make it a habit of sitting regularly for our meditation and we make it a habit to listen to satsang every day, then slowly our mind will become weaker and we will be able to spend more time doing our meditation and we will start enjoying that meditation more. So we should make it a part of our schedule, our daily schedule, and we should prioritize our bhajan simran and keep that as the first thing in the schedule. By doing that, our love and affection will grow towards our master and towards nam and meditation, and we will start more and more enjoying it and doing it. Baba Ram Singh. A 
couple of comments. He refers to the mind becoming weaker. And here he is referring to the mind as a kind of adversary or ego or enemy that needs to submit to the will of the soul, the will of the spirit, to sit down and focus and do the meditation practice instead of remain focused outside the world, outside. And the running commentary of the monkey mind and all of the, the distractions of thought that the mind throws at us to gain mastery over our mind is what he is referring there when he talks about the mind becoming weaker. He speaks of prioritizing meditation, doing meditation first thing in the schedule. If you meditate early in the day, you can say you've done it. Whereas if you put it off, it may just get put off and put off, you know, put off till the afternoon, put off till the evening, and then you look back and say, you know, I really didn't meditate today at all. So if you meditate first thing, then you can say you have done it. You know, it becomes a priority. We either enjoy doing meditation or we don't. More from the satsang discourses of Baba Ram Singh. The way we have our love and affection outside in the world, if we have that same love and affection at the feet of our masters and towards Nam, the inner light and sound, then we will be successful on this path. To reduce our deeds and to do the meditation of Nam, we have to do our Simran. Simran is very important for that. By doing Simran, we are able to purify our mind. We are able to redeem those karmas that are there on the mind today. And once we do that, then we will get our inner peace and happiness. As long as our mind is not purified, as long as our mind does not become still, we will not be able to get that inner happiness and peace. And that is why masters have suggested that we should do our Simran. We should not look at meditation and Simran as a burden. We should do it with full love and affection. And in our daily schedule, we should keep this as a priority because we should remember that that is what we have got this human form for. That is what we have this human life for. We have to do the Bhajan Simran regularly. It should not be that we do it for a few days and then leave it for a few days and then again do it for a few days and again leave it for a few days. That way we will not be successful. To be successful, we have to be consistent. That is why in our daily schedule, we should always have this as the priority and set a fixed time. That way we will be able to do it better and better. If we set a fixed time for our meditation and we also set a fixed place for sitting for that meditation, then the mind also gets used to it. If we keep changing the time of our meditation or keep changing the place of our meditation, then that gives an opportunity for the mind to also create havoc with us. And then the mind also reminds us of so many other things that have to be done. And that is why it keeps disturbing us. So, if it is used to sitting at a fixed time, it realizes that, yes, this is the time for meditation. And then it leaves us alone for that time. Even place-wise, we should make a fixed place where we sit for meditation. By sitting for meditation at a fixed place, we purify the place. We are making that place holy for sitting for meditation. And our meditation also improves when we sit at the same place. Baba Ram Singh. When Simran increases, our love and attention automatically gets focused within. Babaji used to always say in his satsangs that we should not look at Bhajan Simran as a burden. 
we should do it with love and affection. Without love and affection, it is not possible to do bhajan properly because our mind is outwardly bound to all outside attachments and desires. So when we sit for meditation and it is not with love and affection, then it is a very dry kind of bhajan and we don't get the satisfaction from that bhajan. Mahatmas say that there is only one love in us. That love, we have to see where that should be directed. So if that is directed at the feet of the Master, then we will get success in bhajan. So that one love which we have, it is very easy to direct it outside because we are attached outside. Our desires, our attachments are outside, are all outside. So the love for those things and our love which is there again gets connected in that direction. So it becomes difficult when we sit for bhajan. We are, we are unable to get that love and affection at the feet of the Master. But when we sit for meditation, if we do our Simran and we focus our Simran, then as the Simran keeps increasing and progressing, our love and attention automatically starts getting focused within and our love and affection goes to the feet of the Master. And someday, when we get the taste of Nam within, then the mind completely changes within, starts focusing our love and attention within, and then we are able to sit for a longer time in meditation. It is difficult to bring about a transformation within ourselves unless we sit for meditation for longer hours. So, it is Simran which enables us to do that. By doing Simran, we are able to gradually start sitting for longer hours and focusing within. And then once we are able to do it lovingly and with affection, then gradually our attention starts getting focused at the back of the eye center. And we go and see the radiant form of the Master within. our mind is repeating all our outside thoughts. Everything that we are attached with outside keeps getting repeated and the mind is constantly in that repetition. So if we start repeating the Nam given by the Master, then gradually the mind will shift and that repetition will be able to cut out the outside repetition. For this, it is equally important to listen to satsang every day. If we listen to satsang once in 15 days or a month, then we will not be able to bring about the change or transformation. So when we sit for satsang in our homes, we can listen to those satsangs in the DVDs, but we should listen to that with complete focus and attention and with full love and affection and leave all our outer things that we are doing for that time during which we sit for satsang. If we sit like that, then it is as good as sitting in the presence of the Master. So we should listen to satsang every day. We should do our bhajan also every day. And whenever we have some free time, when the mind is idle, we should do our simran during the rest of the day. Now, by doing that, we will definitely start getting interested in the path within, and we will start getting our success on this path. Just as it is important to feed our body, every day we eat food, it is equally important to do Bhajan Simran, which is the food of the soul. By doing that, the soul will become stronger, and the mind will become weaker. Baba Ram Singh. A couple of comments. He refers here to DVDs. One can also watch a video satsang, stream online, or read a book by a master. Not just any book, of course, but master books, master writings, writings of Sant Sat Gurus. 
at home every single day for 20 minutes or some period of time. I believe Baba Ram Singh has actually mentioned 20 minutes as a good minimum or basic amount of time to spend on daily satsang at home, watching, listening to, or reading something from the writings of the masters, which does indeed provide us with a level of satsang at home. And then, of course, it makes meditation practice easier. You know, we're focused on the path. Then we put down the book and start doing our meditation practice. He also refers to Simran as a practice not only done in meditation, but as something that we do whenever we have free time during the day and night. By practicing our repetition, the repetition of the sacred names within, as often as we can, or take a Simran break now and then, you know, during the day, during the evening, whenever we, we can. It makes meditation also easier. It makes it easier to get to the light. You know, if we have a certain amount of spiritual charge, if we've been practicing the presence of God during the day, from time to time by repeating the sacred names, when we go to do our meditation, it's a bit easier to get to the third eye, easier to get to the light, easier to get to the inner sound current. Ram Singh. So we should keep our attention focused on Simran because more and more Simran will help us refine and purify the mind and that will give us inner peace. We should do Simran throughout the day when we are doing our other chores. We should continue to do our Simran because when we do our Simran while we are doing other things also then when we sit for meditation for that half an hour or one hour, this Simran, which we have been doing earlier, helps us to focus our attention better. Because if we don't do this, then throughout the day we are tied up in our desires and outward thoughts. And when we sit for that half hour, one hour, our attention does not get us focused. Baba Ram Singh. How much time to spend in meditation? How much time to devote to the timeless? The focus today of the Sant Mat Satsang podcast. Some more passages on lengths of time and the effects of those various lengths of time. This is from Baba Jaimal Singh. Shabda Dun, the sound current. When you are doing your bhajan or simran, listening to the sound or repeating the names, do not have any worldly cares in your mind, nor let yourself be distracted by any thoughts. First do your simran for a quarter of an hour, then gradually fix your attention in the music of the shabadun or shabadun. Then Give up Simran and anchor your mind. Give up Simran and anchor your mind and soul in the Shabbat. You will then experience great bliss and supreme grace will descend on you from the highest region. Such was the general pattern. The details, of course, were adjustable. The time factor could vary. But daily spiritual practice, daily meditation practice, is to be maintained at all costs. Baba Jaimal Singh, listen to the Shabadun calling in your heart every day with great love and devotion for 15 minutes or 10 minutes or 5 minutes or an hour or two according to the time 
at your disposal. But you must listen to it every day for a while, says Baba Jaimal Singh. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh also lays great emphasis on this. No matter in what circumstances one finds himself and what new problems one is facing, a devotee should not miss his bhajan. Bhajan, again referring to inner sound meditation. Hazur Baba Sawan Singh, he may give only 15 minutes or even 5 minutes to it daily but he should be on it without a break. Also from the teachings of Baba Sawan Singh from Spiritual Gems, a collection of letters to Satsangis, letters to initiates, I am glad you have received the instruction. Now it is for you to work up. The help of the Master is always there. The Master is not far off from you. He is within you. He is in your eye center. Man and the world are so constituted that there is always one thing or the other cropping up and demanding our attention. Such things should be attended to, but one should find time daily for the spiritual work. It should not be ignored. If full time cannot be given, give as much time as you can. Even five minutes would do. The spiritual work alone goes with us to our credit after death. All other will be left behind. The day that is gone will not come back again. So with love and faith and perseverance, go ahead. From another letter of Hazur Baba Samwan Singh from Spiritual Gems, when the mind is free from little worries and can be put to bhajan smoothly, such opportunities should be realized, should be utilized for bhajan to the maximum advantage. But no matter in what circumstances one finds himself and what new problems one is facing, a devotee should not miss his bhajan. He may give only 15 minutes or even 5 minutes to it daily, but he should be on it without a break. The moment he hears the current at this end, his presence is recorded at the other end. Sach Khand, Baba Samwan Singh, saying, you know, a little bit of meditation that you're doing is counted in the court of the Lord, is registered in heaven, if you will. So here we are finding various lengths of time being mentioned by different masters, with the important thing being, please devote time every single day to meditation. Make it a work in progress. Show up, do it every day, get better at it, and gradually lengthen the amount of meditation time that you have. That's the message of the masters. Sometimes people fall into this call trap or mind trap and come to believe that if they do not devote two and a half hours to meditation in one super long sit, then all attempts at meditating are utterly useless and worthless and meaningless. You know, if you can't do it for two and a half hours, then anything less than that is utterly useless. And that is not true, as we see here from this exploration of the teachings of the masters, five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour, an hour, two hours, or three hours, whatever you can do, please do it every single day. Please meditate and do not give up on meditation. So the masters are not presenting this view that if you do not reach two and a half hours, then throw your hands up, give up any attempt at Meditating for shorter amounts is meaningless, worthless, and useless. That's definitely not what they are saying. They are saying, attempt meditation 
as a work in progress. Grow into it. Keep at it. Come back again and again and again. Knock on the door of the third eye again and again every single day and grow into that ideal of Sant Mat meditation, spending extended amounts of time in meditation. Kabir says, contemplating the, the Sarshab, the true divine sound, even for half of a moment, that's 30 seconds, confers much more spiritual merit than living in the holy city of Varanasi for millions of years. One of my favorite quotes from Kabir. Contemplating the Sarshab, the divine true sound, even for half a moment, confers much more spiritual merit than living in the holy city of Varanasi for millions of years. That's a passage from a Kabir book known as the Brahm Nairupan, a kind of sequel to the Anurag Sagar, and it's published by the Kabir Association. Baba Ram Singh Ji on meditation and meditation time. Dion Bhajan Simran is our true work because that is the work which we do for our soul. Every other work that we do, we are working for somebody else. So we must prioritize this work and that should be first priority in terms of doing our Simran, Dhyan, and Bhajan. So by doing Simran, Dhyan, Bhajan, we are enabling the Masters to shower their grace upon us. And by doing that, we are also redeeming our deeds and helping the Masters to help us. Because by not doing so, by not doing our Simran regularly and consistently, we will not be able to reduce or redeem our deeds and these accumulate and ultimately we have to redeem these deeds in the form of illness or loss or loss of wealth or other forms of sorrow illness or loss of wealth or other forms of sorrow so I pray to the feet of the masters that they grace all of you and the grace enables you to do a lot of Simran, Dion, and Bhajan, and devotion. Radha Swami. Another passage from the Satsang discourses of Baba Ram Singh. In the Satsang Discourses of Baba Ram Singh, he talks about different lengths of time. And generally, with the teachings of the Masters, you know, from, from studying the teachings of the Masters, I can say that most of the time they say that you really shouldn't dare to meditate less than an hour per day. You know, that's getting kind of problematic, you know. It's, it's great to meditate for the two and a half hours, but don't dip under one hour. You know, that starts to get to be a rocky road. So you could think of an hour a day as kind of a rock bottom minimum, if you will. But at the same time, they also say things like we've heard, you know, 20 minutes, 15 minutes, 5 minutes, 30 seconds of bhajan is, is destiny changing, according to Kabir. 
you know, encouraging words from various masters about different lengths of time. And they do this because once you sit yourself down, whether you plan to do a long meditation sit or not, you enter the timeless, you enter the third eye center and will delve into the world of within and have a great meditation. So the key is not to think about time, but just simply to sit yourself down and dive in and then meditation will take its course and you will meditate for a longer period of time than you were planning to if you just sit yourself down and do the meditation. How much time to spend in meditation? Hazur Maharaj Rai Salagram said that if one cannot sit for the full two and a half hours in one meditation sit, then divide meditation up into multiple meditation sits each day and reach your goal that way. Dividing up the time into multiple meditation sits is the approach taught by Sri Bhagarath Baba of the Maharishi Mehi Ashram. Meditation done three times per day plus before sleep is the format that he discusses in his satsang discourses. He says, Sants have fixed times of meditation. Those times are one in the pre-dawn, i.e. three hours before sunrise, the time described as Brahma Muhurta, the hour of God. Also known as Amrit Vela, that's a Sikh term, meaning the hour of elixir. Two, after taking a bath or during the midday, in the middle of the day, and three, during the evening, after sunset. Meditation done at these three times is called the thrice daily meditation. A practitioner must sit for meditation in these three times and also should do manas jap or repeating the guru instructed mantra, a term for simran, or manas dhyan involving the mind and visualizing or seeing the master's radiant form inside or the inner light while doing worldly work during the day, doing Simran repetition and thinking of the Master during the day, in other words. In the evening, just before going to bed, the practitioner should sit in meditation for two to four minutes and then go to sleep. A practitioner can continue Manas Jap or Manas Dhyan, Simran and, and Dhyan, or keep his or her vision straight inside with closed eyes laying in bed. This practice protects one from terrible, unpleasant dreams. And on the other hand, the practitioner can be benefited, potentially, with the appearance of sages or saints, or having satsang in the dream state. The appearance, the seeing of saints and sages in the dream state is an indication of spiritual upwardness or progress, says Sri Bhagrath Baba. So just to clarify, uh, while doing worldly work during the day, do Simran or Dion, there he is really saying, you know, repeat the sacred name or names and think of your master, visualize the form of your master. Not so much inner light at that time. The term Dion can mean visualizing the form of one's master, or thinking of your spiritual teacher, uh, or it can refer to seeing inner light, which is more of a meditation practice. But you can think of your master, you can do the repetition of various names of God, or your sacred name, uh, during the day, to help spiritualize the day, to maintain some spiritual charge during the day, to do as Brother Lawrence of the Resurrection once called it, practicing the presence of God. And of course he here describes three periods of time, the thrice daily meditation being the hour of elixir or Brahma Muhurta, 3 a.m. or super early in the morning, another meditation period during the middle of the day, and then after sunset in the evening, but not so late that it 
means you fall asleep during your meditation. You don't want to make it, you know, just a few minutes before going to bed. Uh, but then again, he does speak of an actual, while trying to fall asleep, meditation technique of meditating for two to four minutes just uh, prior to falling asleep when you're lying in bed as a way to try and spiritualize your dreams, which is an interesting concept, isn't it? Satsang in the dream state, if you are so privileged. In his book for initiates, um, Hazur Maharaj Rai Seligram characterized Satmat meditation as being an art of meditation, a practice meant for human beings to accomplish, returning again and again, and one will experience success on this path of the Masters. It's a gradual growth, gradual progress. Hazur Maharaj Rai Seligram was always very compassionate and encouraging with his disciples, saying to them to do the practices that they find bliss in performing. He would counsel his initiates that if they cannot hear the sound, focus on meditating on the light. If they aren't able to concentrate at all, then do more Simran. If one cannot even do that, is going through some sort of dark night of the soul or dry spell and is having a tough time meditating at all, he would instruct them to read something from the writings of the masters, as well as to sing the name Radha Swami out loud for a period of time, or sing hymns, the bhajans, the hymns composed by various saints, and then return, resume with meditation practice. So in his book, Jagat Prakash, he had many suggestions about what to do when you're having a tough time with this or that practice. And he would always encourage them to have, he would always have techniques at the ready so that they could reboot their spiritual practice and then get back to their daily meditation practice. And finally today, from the writings of Hazur Maharaj, the realization that it is really divine grace that is powering this endeavor to go within and to ascend and return back to the kingdom of the heavens. This is from the writings of Hazur Maharaj Rai Seligram from Radhaswami Mat Prakash, Light on the Teachings of the Lord of the Soul. Without the help and grace of the Supreme Father and His special and beloved Son, the Sant Satguru in human form, the Master, no human being can ever acquire sufficient strength to be able to give up worldly desires and pleasures or to undertake the journey homeward. Or, in other words, practice devotion according to the mode prescribed by the Radhaswami faith. It must always be remembered that None but the Sant Sat Guru can, under his own protection, regenerate the fallen humanity and grant sufficient strength to enable a disciple or devotee to fight his way out of the various spheres presided over by superior mind and matter, where all sor sorts of obstacles and temptations are ready to interrupt the traveler in his journey and draw him towards the creation the material realm. The work of regeneration consists in the movement of the spirit entity, the soul, and the mind from the lower to the higher spheres by practice of devotion, i.e. meditation, Surat Shabad Yoga. A sincere devotee having strong love for the Supreme Being may through perseverance and fervor and the grace and mercy of the Supreme Father and the Sant Sat Guru of the time. Traverse the regions, raise his spirit, and finally enter and take his abode in the mansion of the Supreme Father at the top of the first grand division or pure spiritual realm. And 
I have time for one more reading, a kind of poetic conclusion of the program today. In the Sarbachan Radhaswami poetry of Swamiji Maharaj, the spiritual master of Hazur Maharaj, Rai Salagram, there are conversational prayers directed toward the friend, the beloved, the object of his communion, the lover of his soul, the merciful lord of the soul, Radhaswami Dayal. In this loving context of devotional bhakti, mystical experiences, Surat Chabad Yoga, divine light and sound, the light and sound of God, take the devotee soul upon an interior journey beyond illusion, beyond time and duality, to an ultimate reality, the ocean of love. Swamiji Maharaj describes as omnipotent, omniscient, and omnipresent with attributes of grace, mercy, love, bliss, and peace. Swamiji Maharaj says, from one step to another, the soul beholds strange things which cannot be described in human language. Every region and everything is utterly beyond words. What beauty and glory! How can I describe them? There is nothing here to convey the idea. I am helpless. Love plays the supreme part. It is all love. So says Radhaswami. That's from the Sarbachan poetry of Swami G. Maharaj. I'm just reaching this stage where you can't describe how wonderful it is. It's more wonderful than can be articulated in human language. So it is really divine grace that ultimately powers this journey of meditation. Discipline, showing up, wanting to meditate each day is our part but then it's really divine grace that does the heavy lifting of lifting the soul pulling the soul up so on the divine end of the equation is divine grace working overhead to uplift the seeking yearning soul on this end on the human end of the equation is love and devotion for spiritual practice. So I will conclude with this passage from Yogani Mataji from the book Enchanted Land by David Lane, quoting Yogani Mataji in one particular chapter of that book. Personally, I was overcome with the profundity of Mataji's account Although it seemed plausible, especially given the findings of near-death patients who have been resuscitated, the soul's journey in the beginning stages appeared too difficult. How can one sit so still, repeat only holy names, and think of God constantly? He asked. Mataji's reply. By falling in love... By falling in love, Mataji answered serenely, because when one is truly in love, nothing but the beloved can enter one's mind. So the secret of Surat Shabad Yoga and of mysticism, she goaded, is not necessarily practice, practice, and more practice, but love. To be so devoted to one's Lord that nothing can stand in the way. This and nothing else is the truth of Sant Mat, Mataji stressed. <laughs> 